Good afternoon, everybody. It's about noon time here in mid Minnesota Twin Cities. Today, we're going to begin this reading with a serenity prayer. Now, follow with me if you know it. If you don't, follow along on the page here. It starts with this God, grant me the serenity to accept the things that I cannot change, the courage to change the things that I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Amen. Peace. You know, whatever you want to end that with, that's up to you. Now, I would just recommend saying amen or peace or something like that, but signify that you're sending that up to the good Lord and you need something back, right? That's what our faith is for. We have faith that we'll get something back. Now, let's go through the 12 steps of this program of recovery that we call AA, but we use these principles in all all my life, basically, in all areas of my life, and it it tends to work if we take our life day by day, step by step. So, number one, we admitted that we were powerless over alcohol and that our lives had become unmanageable. Two, came to believe that a power greater than ourselves could restore us to sanity. Three, made a decision to turn our will and our lives over to the care of God as we understood him. Four, made a searching and fearless moral inventory of ourselves. Five, admitted to God, to ourselves, and to another human being the exact nature of our wrongs. Six, we were entirely ready to have God remove all these defects of character. Seven, um, humbly asked him to remove our shortcomings. Eight, made a list of all persons we had harmed and became willing to make amends to them all. Nine, make direct amends to such people wherever possible, except when to do so would injure them or others. 10. Continued to take personal inventory, and when we were wrong, we promptly admitted it. And 11. Sought through prayer and meditation to improve our conscious contact with God, as we understood Him, praying only for the knowledge of His will for us and the power to carry that out. And finally, my friends, and probably one of the more important steps of this whole step-by-step process, okay, is number 12. Having had a spiritual awakening as a result of these steps, we tried to carry this message to alcoholics and to practice these principles in all our affairs. Now these, there is one for every single problem we have in our lives, right? We can come up against any kind of problem and work through the steps and then have a way of moving forward, right? Okay. Now, April 18th, Thursday, Here is our recovery thought for today. As I look back over my drinking career, have I learned that you take out of life what you put into it? So when I put drinking into my life, did I take out a lot of bad things? Time in the hospital with the DTs, jail sentences for drunken driving, loss of job, loss of home and family. When I put drinking in my life, was almost everything I took out bad. Should I, I should strive for a friendliness and helpfulness that may affect all who come near to me. I should try to see something to love in them. I should welcome them, bestow little courtesies and understandings on them, and help them if they ask for help. I must send no one away without a word of cheer, a feeling that I really care about them. God may have put the impulse in some despairing person's mind to come to me. I must not fail God by repulsing that person. They may not want to communicate with me unless they are sure of a warm welcome. So today we pray that we may warmly welcome all who come to us for help. And we pray that we may make them feel that we truly and really care for them. That is the April 18th thought, meditation, and prayer for today. I want you guys to know that I love you all so much. Hang in there if you're going through something because you know what? There's always a there's always a light or a beacon on the horizon. You know what? For me, that's God. That's my relationship with God. That's who I follow and that's where my faith lies. And when things get shaky and the ground gets a little uh, uneasy and your foundation gets a little shaken, you guys need to go back to what we know. That's our faith. That's our commitment to God to know that he's going to carry us through, right? Because it's his will for us. It's not us. It's not our will for us. It's not. It's not my will for Jesse. It's not. It's not Bill's will for Bill. It's not Stacy's will for Stacy. It's not Susie's will for Susie. It's God's will for Susie, Bill, Stacy, Jesse, for anybody that is dedicated enough and 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 you know and has that relationship. So I would implore you. I I plead with you to get out and find that relationship. Doesn't mean you're weak. Doesn't mean you're soft. Doesn't mean you're uh, uh, less than. Okay. It means that you have more determination than most to commit to a life of faith and to be a believer in something much greater than ourselves. I love you guys. God bless.